What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Well, first of all, I'm sorry that it's been almost two weeks now since my last update, but finally I've seen some progress and um, as you can see, I just made it to my physiotherapist to do a running analysis. So let's jump in and I'll talk you through the rest later on. See you inside. All right, so the first thing we had to do was to measure my foot length in order to then be able to accurately measure my stride length and to analyze my gait. Um, to do that, we use the infrared sensors, which are attached to the treadmill. And uh, you can see the, the camera to the side and to the back already, which will come into play later in the video. But before, I quickly wanted to show you another extra I did measuring the actual bone length of my legs. And it turns out that my left leg is four millimeters longer than my right, which will come into play during the analysis. So let's jump in it. All right, so while you see me running at the treadmill at six kilometers per hour right now, barefooted, I wanted to talk you through the structure of the analysis we have planned. We started out running barefoot because after reading a lot of books and trying out the barefoot method, I came to realize that I would be injury free running barefoot and uh, I wanted to know the reason why. So what we did, we compared my barefoot running to running in vibrant five fingers and running in my current running shoes. And in each of these three sets I would run uh, at 6, 10 and 13 kilometers per hour for one minute. The first thing we looked at was my stride length and uh, we came to realize that my left stride is about 6 centimeters longer than my right so I'm actually limping while running. When we sped up to 10 kilometers per hour that difference actually increased to a staggering 8 centimeters per stride and um, that of course put a lot of impact on my right foot where I had my first inflammation which was called runner's knee by then. And the second thing we realized now going at 13 kilometers per hour was my bad running form. So I'm pretty bent at the hips and landing way in front of my center of gravity. But I'm not gonna try to squeeze in the topic of running form into this little analysis. And I'm gonna make another series on that. As I move my camera to the back of the treadmill, you can see that I put on my vibrant five fingers and we're gonna go through the same three intervals again. So six kilometers, 10 and 13 kilometers per hour running. And the first thing that you notice when you see me running from the back is that my <laughs> arms swing differently. So while you see me speeding up here to 10 kilometers per hour again, you can notice two things. First, my right arm is swinging far out to the side instead of aligned to my hips back and forth. And the second thing is that I'm all over the place while running on the treadmill. So I'm scooping the left and right and kind of imbalanced already just wearing the vibrant five fingers. It gets a little better when I speed up to 13 kilometers per hour, but it was very noticeable. When I finally put on my running shoes, by the way, I'm wearing Nike Zoom Pegasus. I realized right away how hard I was landing. I was uh, pretty much slamming the treadmill with my shoes and that of course causes a much stronger impact on my knees and my hips so all the joints are much more under pressure during during a run like that and uh, what we also noticed when we sped up to 10 kilometers an hour was how insecure I was so what already happened during the run with the Vibrams I shoved around on the treadmill and um, was, it was really tough to hold the balance for me and that is due to my weak core so let's go into slow motion so I can actually show you what I mean. The two things you can notice right away uh, apart from running side to side. First I move a lot up and down so if you 
take my the end of my jersey and look how how far it's going up over the white line I drew there. Um, this is my vertical gain I get from running. So I jump a lot up and down instead of keeping my hips steady, which of course increases the impact on my hip. And the second thing is that my hip from the foot that is in the air is actually dropping down. So my core is not holding my hip steady while I'm running, which as a result puts extra impact on my IT band on the outer side of the knee causing the inflammation. So back at my apartment finishing up the edit for this video I quickly wanted to summarize the learnings I had in the past couple of weeks. First, the injury of ligaments or joints is in most cases only a symptom for a deeply rooted problem in your body. So in my case it was the combination of weakness, running technique and the difference of the length of my legs that caused my body to adapt a bad running habit. And while it took my doctors four years to figure out uh, what it actually was, only treating symptoms, I am actually injury free if you look, look from an injury perspective because the inflammation is only temporary and my cartilage is still fine and my hip is still okay. So there's actually nothing to worry about, just some good stuff I can, I can work on which I'm gonna show you in later videos. Second, barefoot running can and will improve your running technique, especially um, your cadence, so the steps you take per minute and the way you land, so you actually do some forefoot striking, which I will get into in one of the next videos. So um, I just wanted to uh, make sure that you keep in mind that your body and especially your feet have to adapt to that kind of running. So I would suggest that you don't do any runs longer than 5k that's what i'm up to because it takes about half a year to two years for your feet and your lower legs to adapt to to that different type of running because you've been shoot i guess like i do from uh, the very beginning and yeah the third thing is uh, running form is crucial um, not only to run more efficiently but also injury free and even though barefoot running gets you um, gets you started, there are many more things to consider while running. So I will add some videos on uh, she running or key running method, I think it's pronounced um, in the next videos that will guide you through the different aspects of running technique. And fourth and final, um, core strength is inevitable for running. So I've been doing core exercises for the past three weeks every day now and I'm already seeing results. So I will make my next video about core exercises, which I got from my physiotherapist that really helped me to keep my hips aligned and um, improve my running technique significantly. So I hope you got something from this video. If you liked it, make sure you give it a thumbs up, uh, click the subscription button below, and I see, you, I see you next video. Until then, stay active, healthy, and injury-free. Bye-bye.